Now, let us start about the seismic hazard assessment uh, and uh, just like the basic seismology chapter, I already have a detailed playlist for this whole topic. So, I will quickly go through its um, specific details because my purpose is not to make you expert in seismic hazard assessment or PSHA. Anyone can learn that afterwards also as part of their MS thesis or as part of any other activity. So, I will just quickly introduce what are some of the basic elements in PSHA process, right? basic terminology, what are its key steps and I will show you one example also very simple PSHA example. right? So, although I have divided this whole lecture into 7 parts, but I do not think I will go beyond part 5 and in first 5 parts also, I think I will be very brief mostly focusing on on this these part 3 and part 4. Uh, part 2 actually will be explaining the actual process of PSHA. right? So, it has 4 basic steps. So, I will just quickly introduce those 4 steps and will not go in the specific details. right? Part 1 is basic introduction. I will quickly sweep through that part 1 and it is about the introduction to earthquake hazards. right? what I mean actually when I say uh, ground shaking hazard or any other earthquake hazard. So, earthquake is responsible for around 60 percent of all deaths which are caused by natural disasters. right? So, uh, one main reason is that uh, uh, that it is one of the disasters which give us very less warning time. So, on average in 20th century we have uh, 17,000 persons, uh, 17,000 deaths actually per year caused by the major earthquakes. Right? We have the Kashmir 2005 earthquake in Pakistan, where the official figure exceeded 73,000 deaths. So, these are uh, the list of the main earthquake hazards. Right? So, when I say earthquake hazard, generally I mean ground shaking, but ground shaking is one of the earthquake hazards. Right? The, the earthquake hazard is a general term. Uh, ground shaking is the vibration of earth's crust which our structures experience actually. Right? This is our main concern in this course. But ground displacement along faults which is called surface rupture is also a ground is also an earthquake hazard. Right? So, sometimes as I explained in the seismology class that sometimes the slip or rupture manifests itself on the surface also. It occurs only for very I mean uh, less number of earthquakes, but it can happen and your structure can come in that rupture also, if it is exactly built on a, on an existing fault line. right? This, this surface rupture is all is a separate earthquake hazard. right? We are not going to design our buildings for this hazard. And by the way, you cannot design for this hazard because if your your structure is going to have a relative displacement of let's say five meters, no design can handle this relative displacement. So we cannot design against surface rupture. So what is the strategy? That we locate fault lines and do not build our structure on existing fault lines, right? So there are codal provisions for that also that if you know certainly that there is a fault line here, there is a buffer zone around 200 meters or different codes have different guidelines. So, you, you are not allowed to build on that particular land, right? so that your structure may not come under sur surface rupture in future earthquake. Then all of the ground failures, liquefaction is a earthquake hazard, landslide is triggered by earthquakes, mudslide, differential soil settlement these are all earthquake hazards. right? Tsunami is an earthquake hazard. Floods from dams and levee failures, fires resulting from earthquakes, all of these hazards are earthquake related <coughs> hazards or earthquake induced hazards. But we are mostly interested in this first one. When we say earthquake resistant design, we actually mean by ground shaking resistant design. right? this is the scope of our course on the ground shaking. So, you have seen these kind of 
results or consequences of ground shaking hazard um, the 2008 wenchuan earthquake in china you can see the destruction no need to explain our own kashmir 2005 earthquake event and uh, this is a picture from balakot i don't know i have told this story to you or not but uh, this is a real kind of a tragic story which is uh, associated with that figure this person this, this house actually is is belong it belongs to this person right it is his own house this one right and this picture is taken one month after the earthquake right so he had nowhere to go so he just started living on the rubble of his own house right one month after the earthquake and he started doing his daily things started his life actually uh, on that rubble then uh, this is from yogyakarta 2006 this is surface rupture hazard not ground shaking this is uh, the shikang dam in taiwan and it was built on a fault line which was not previously known until an earthquake occur chichi earthquake very famous earthquake 1999 and fault line was like this right so one part of the dam lifted up relative to to the other you can see like this is the top part of dam and it is so there is a relative movement of uh, several meters right so you cannot design any structure to accommodate several meters of relative displacement so no design is possible for rupture so it is not that we know all the faults which exist right so there there is a possibility especially mostly in our region uh, that there is a fault and we don't know right there is a possibility for that also so a closer picture you can see this top part uh, have a relative deformation of several meters then soil related consequences liquefaction is a phenomena in which loose soil start behaving like a liquid if it is shaken it has a very low uh, capacity low shear strength so when it is shaken it starts behaving like a liquid so any structure which is resting on that soil it will just topple it will just rotate as though it is resting on a liquid thing right so all of these structures for example example from turkey example from philippine the structure itself is intact but it just rotated right because of the liquefaction of the soil underneath we also have this issue in south in uh, in some areas of sindh southern part uh, we have the liquefaction susceptible areas or liquefaction susceptible soils right having a very low shear strength very low vs 30 value and uh, luckily that area is also not very uh, seismically active otherwise it would have been a big issue there right uh, obviously if there are any underground structures when soil behaves like a liquid they boil up right they they change their geometry because of the lift up forces or buoyant forces they tend to go up so an example from hokkaido in japan this uh, this was an underground structure it just lifted up right because of the liquefaction then all of the underground piping system and everything it will be have damage and this is an example from luzon earthquake in philippines then earthquake induced landslides i think uh, no need to explain this is wenchuan earthquake in china uh, we know that uh, the the slopes which are not stable they are just waiting for any trigger until they fail so earthquake can provide that trigger to them right in india bhuj earthquake in 2001 several of the structures or irrigation dams were destroyed tsunami is also an earthquake related hazard uh, it mostly occurs when there is a sudden movement or rupture in 
uh, in two parts of the land or the rupture plane lies in ocean for example right so for example if you have a fault here if there is a sudden rupture sudden lift of one part of land relative to other it will create waves and those waves initially will be long period type but as they uh, reach to the shallow grounds shallow height they become high frequency and then they can be very destructive this is an example from thailand this was the level of uh, uh, water in that 2004 tsunami which occurred actually in more than one countries 1995 kobe earthquake i think i have shown this figure earlier also these points are the points where the earthquake induced fires right so earthquake can induce fire also in industrial buildings in power plants in other uh, you can say in, in other kind of structures so you can see these fires they are triggered by earthquake right in kobe 2000 uh, in 1995 so uh, considering all these hazard these are the basic questions that what will be the uh, where the future earthquake will occur what will be its size how frequently they will occur right and what is the shaking intensity which is experienced at a particular site how that ground motion will be influenced by the local soil and what are the expected earthquake hazards out of all those hazards what are the important hazards which can be produced at our site and then this last question is not about the hazard how about the susceptibility of buildings and structures to damage from those ground shaking all other questions are related to hazard but this last question is about the buildings hazard means the the process of occurrence of that phenomena itself right earthquake vulnerability means that what is the quality of your buildings right the quality of buildings have nothing to do with the natural possibility of earthquake occurrence right they are two different things 